Hi folks, welcome to Coffee and Colossians. Um, I don't have my coffee with me because I'm just about to go and get it from uh, the beach here up in Newcastle, which is known as Nobby's Beach. And I thought I would still share with you though, uh, as we come to this last part of verse two, grace and peace to you from God our Father. Um, you know, when we greet people, how, how do we greet people? You know, we say to people, how are you? Oh, well, I'm fine. And was it Joe Novison who taught me that fine stands for frustrated, insecure, neurotic, and exhausted? We're asking how people are. But there's another way of greeting people. And I think of an old minister I knew who would meet somebody and go, oh, blessings on you, blessings be upon you. And I thought it was quaint and cute and uh, a bit funny, but actually, what a great way to greet someone. And that's what Paul does here. He asks for grace and peace be given to them. So he doesn't say, how are you? He says, you know, I'm Paul, you're God's holy people, the faithful, and he said, I wish you grace and peace. And what a great thing to wish. Um, it's interesting doing these talks that, or these Bible studies or these short comments, however you want to call it. Every time, every time there's somebody who's going through pain or suffering, um, somebody who's heard that they've got cancer. And do you know, what can you pray for someone who's got cancer? Well, of course you can pray for healing. Of course you can pray for their family. But you pray for grace and peace, grace to sustain themselves through it and the peace of God to overcome the, just the dread fear that you feel. So let's just think about these two words briefly. Grace is charis. It's, uh, uh, it, there's a deep prayerful concern for his readers. Gordon MacDonald says the world can do almost anything as well or better than the church. You don't need to be a Christian to build houses, feed the hungry or heal the sick. There's only the one thing the world cannot do and that's give grace. Well, that's true. Well, what about this though? Peace, Irene, shalom. That's the absence of any disturbance. It's well-being. Uh, you know, governments now talk about uh, well-being. I think Humza Yusuf has talked about an economy of well-being. Well, what does he mean by that? Well, the Bible carries this idea of social, material, physical. And he says, basically, you're in need of this. You're in need of wholeness. You're physically ill, you're mentally disturbed, you're emotionally traumatized, you're weak and you're weary, you're spiritually worn out. And you need that wholeness, especially in relationships. And Christ is the mediator of that wholeness. Paul wants them to grasp more fully the nature of the relationship of peace which God has established for them. And when you pray for peace for someone, it's not just a warm, fuzzy feeling, but also, and it's not just spiritual prosperity, it's re rich, it's deep, it's coming from a mature place, it's, it's the covenantal peace, it's peace in every aspect. Well, do you want this? Do you want this grace? Do you want this peace? Well, pray for it and um, pray for it. Wish it upon other people, grace and peace to you. What a greeting for yourself, for your family, for the church. And we get that through listening to Jesus speaking to us through his word.